Hey guys, uh, today we're going to be doing something slightly different. Usually we do colour grades of portraits and landscapes. Today we're going to be trying something to do with macro photography. Now there are a few ways you can take these photos. The uh, most expensive way is go out and buy a macro lens. Um, unfortunately those lenses cost probably about £300-£400 pounds if you want to get a decent one. Alternatively you can do what I did for this photo and you can use a lens ball. If you don't know what a lens ball is, um, go check out my Instagram um, and you can go and check, sorry, if you don't know what a lens ball is you can go and check out their Instagram down below in the description. Um, basically it's just a glass ball that sort of curves light, so in other words you can now zoom into objects. Okay, so the way I took this photo is I literally got the lens ball, placed it up against the eye, and then I took a photo through the lens ball, and then what happens is it obviously zooms in to that object. Now in this case, for it to be focused, the actual lens ball had to be pressed up against the front of the eye. Um, I wouldn't suggest doing this at home unless you really know, kind of, you know and you're, you're okay with doing this, obviously because you're pressing something against your eye. Okay, so once you've done that, you're going to drop it into Lightroom, and I'm going to show you, I've taken quite a few photos of this eye. Now when you use different coloured light, so in some of these you get some nice reflections around here, that's basically just when the light is reflecting through the lens ball, you get some nice patterns. And you okay, so the first thing you do is come into your develop module, um, I'm going to come up to this crop tool and I've cropped it to 4x5 so then it works for Instagram. So for example the other photos where we've got the blue light you could use one of our Brandon Werfel presets so if I come over to this photo for example our Brandon Werfel presets you can purchase from the link in the description and there will be a discount code next to that which will probably run for five days after this video has been released so make sure you go and check that out and um, that discount will only be running for five days but you could then go onto one of our presets and you can just test to see if any of them work for the photo. So this colour grade I've got at the moment, I used one of the Brandon Werfel presets. You can see it really does accentuate those blue colours. If I show you the before, um, it looks like that, and then that's the after. It really does make it kind of blue and white. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is head onto the basics panel, and we're just going to decrease the temperature. I want to add a little bit more blue to this photo. So I can put it on 3685. I'm also going to increase the tint to about plus 10. So that's really all we're going to do with those. We could come back to them later. And the next thing I want to do is brighten up this image. You can see here the shadows are quite dark. And we want to make sure we can visibly see the iris. Um, so we're going to increase the exposure just a little bit, probably to about plus 0.2, something around that point. Uh, contrast, we also want to increase ever so slightly as well. Um, we're going to increase that to about plus 20. Now, as for the highlights, you can either drag them down so you can see more of the white of the eye, or you can drag them up. Uh, it depends on what sort of color grade you're going for. Um, to start off with, I'm going to drag them up, just because I kind of like the bright whites in my photos. As for the shadows, really here we want to drag them up quite a long way. I'm going to drag them probably all the way up to about 55. Um, I don't want to go too far because then we're going to start to introduce noise into the photo, but we want to go enough where we can actually see the iris. Now as for whites and blacks, I usually like to bring the whites up and drop down the blacks. So we're going to bring the whites up to plus 20, plus 30, and we're going to drop the blacks to about minus 30. Okay, moving on, we can get to the clarity, vibrance, and saturation. Um, here you have two choices. One, you can increase the clarity um, on the entire image, or you can do that later on just various parts of the image. Um, I'm going to bring the clarity up to about plus 10, maybe simply because I like to make it a little bit sharper, um, but I don't want to overdo it. In fact, I may even put that on about 7. As for vibrance and saturation, I usually increase the vibrance not very much, plus 6 will do, and I usually decrease the saturation. The next thing you want to do is decide on what colours you want your photo to have. Um, in this case, we can't really play around with colours too much. We're going to put it into Photoshop later and try and do something there. Um, but in this case, I'm going for an orange and teal look, just mainly because that's the sort of look I have on my Instagram. And to do that, if you come down to Camera Calibration uh, and go into the red primary and the blue primary slider, drag up the red primary slider to about plus 30, plus 40. Um, and drag down the blue primary slider to about the same but in the negative value. The next thing I like to do is come onto the tone curve and I usually go for a nice standard S curve just to increase a little bit of contrast. I don't want to put too much in because when you do that you start to lose detail in the eye. I may even lift it up a bit like that. Um, here I'm not bringing down any of the blacks because I don't want to lose any of the detail in the eye. I don't want it to be too dark. Um, I also like to add a little bit of fade to my images. Um, so I'm going to drag the bottom up like that. Okay, moving on from the tone curve, the next thing we have is the HSL sliders. Here we can really adjust the colours um, and the saturation and luminance, which is basically um, where we de decide the main feel of our image. Um, the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to come down to the hues. I think this image needs to be slightly more orange and blue. Um, so if I come onto the red slider, you can see if I drag it all the way to the left we get more pink. If I drag it all the way to the right it's more green. Um, probably going to drag it to about minus two. 
um, and I'm just going to keep on adjusting these until I get colors that I really like. Okay, so if I come down to saturation here, I want to make sure that the main color in my photo is blue, mainly because that's what my feed is looking at. So if I drop down the saturation of the reds, the oranges, and the yellows, you can see that what we're looking at mainly is a very desaturated image with some blues in it. Um, this photo doesn't have much blue in it, so we've got two options. One, we can try and put more blue in it in Photoshop, or we can see what it looks like in Lightroom if we increase the saturation of the blues. So if I drag up the saturation of the blues, and the aquas, but we're dragging it up quite a way. At this point, we're working at about plus 60 in the blue saturations. I think I've dropped off the oranges a little bit too much, so I'm gonna bring those back up. And um, you have two choices here. You can either go for a really saturated image, which may look quite fun, quite nice. Um, alternatively, you can go for a slightly more desaturated image. At the moment, I don't want anything too uh, of the extremes, so I'm gonna leave it around the center. As for the luminance, again, that's just the brightness of each color, so I'm gonna drag up the reds, maybe the oranges ever so slightly. The yellows as well and um, the blues if I overdo it what you'll find is you won't be able to see the blues in the image so I might drag that down slightly okay so the next thing we're gonna work on is split toning split toning basically just allows us to add a certain specific color into the highlights and the shadows um, I like to do this method where you press option or alt on your keyboard depending if you're on Mac or Windows it's option if you're on Mac um, and then click on the hue slider and drag it along and you can see what color you're going to add to your image. Now I'm looking for probably a blue sort of color in the highlights. I'm going to drag it to about 197. And then if I get the saturation and I drag the saturation slider up to plus 30, the shadows I'm going for a orange sort of color. So I think plus 18 might do. Okay, so that's it for split toning. It really doesn't add too much to the image, but it does do some fine details. The next thing is the detail slider. In this, I think the photo is probably sharp enough. If I increase the sharpness, we might be able to see more of the iris. Um, so I'm going to increase the sharpness to about 58. But when we've been adjusting the colors, we have also increased the amount of noise in the photo. So I'm going to put the noise reduction probably on about plus 10, plus 15. One thing I want to do now is come up to this tool here. And this tool will allow us to select a certain area and work within that area. Now, because the main focus of this photo is the iris, I want to make sure the photo, you can really see how clear the iris is. You can really see the detail in the iris. Um, there is going to be a limit to this because this lens that I used has got a very soft focus. Um, so we're not going to get an absolutely perfectly clear iris. However, um, what you're going to do is draw that circle shape over the iris and place it in the correct position. Um, come on to the tool here and just reset everything by double clicking on the word effect. Just resets all of these to zero. Now, before you do anything, you want to scroll down and click on invert mask. That means any of these sliders that we move will affect only that area within the circle. So firstly, I'm going to come to shadows and I'm just going to bump up the shadows a bit to about plus 50. You can already see now we're beginning to see more of the iris and decrease the blacks. And you can see here we're getting a lot more contrast in the photo. We don't want to decrease the blacks too much, so we actually start to lose detail, but we want to make sure that it doesn't look too unrealistic. Uh, you can also do some contrast as well. I wouldn't do too much because that tends to make the photo slightly a bit darker as well. Um, and then you can adjust the um, exposure accordingly. Um, the next thing you want to do is come down to sharpness. So I'm going to increase the sharpness up to plus 100. That's quite extreme. You probably don't want to do that for your photo. Um, I'm also going to increase the noise reduction to about plus 20 as well, because when we increase the sharpness, we do introduce some noise as well. Uh, one thing we can play around with is clarity. If we increase clarity, it may also help increase the sharpness in the iris. I think the photo is basically there. I don't think there's much more you really want to do with it. We can always come back to camera calibration and maybe increase and decrease the red and blue primary just to make it a little bit more saturated. Um, I do kind of like that color, that sort of effect it's giving. So I might just do that. One thing you can do is you can come onto presets, click on the plus arrow and save this preset if you ever wanted to use it again. It's something I really recommend. It's quite a nice thing to do. Right, now we're gonna export this and we're gonna move this into Photoshop. To do that, come into file, export and choose your export location. So what I've gone ahead and done is placed the image into a Photoshop file. Um, I've also gone ahead and color graded one of the other photos that I took with the blue light. So we have some blue bokeh and we're going to try and place that bokeh onto the image below. Um, okay, so the first thing I want to do is get the opacity of the top layer, which is the blue one. And we're going to just lower that just so we can see roughly how they're going to work together. And we're just going to keep on adjusting it until we kind of have an idea where we want to place the bokeh in this image. Now, obviously in this area here, it's very washed out. There's a lot going on um, with, the, um, with the light in this image. So it may be an idea just to use some of this bokeh from here and place it over. What we're going to do is come onto this. We're going to duplicate the layer, turn off the layer underneath it, and we're going to label this blue. 
Then what we're going to do is come down to the uh, selection mask and we're going to press B on our keyboard to bring up the brush tool. We're then going to press X to make sure we've got the black as our foreground color and we are literally just going to paint to get rid of everything else apart from what we want. Um, we're not going to use the eraser tool simply because the eraser tool means that once we've made that edit we can't actually bring back what we've deleted. If I press command T that means I can then move it around. So I'm just going to move it around and place it somewhere that I think may work. Um, I'm probably looking at about the top right hand corner. I might even raise rotate it slightly. I don't want it to cover or take away from the actual eye. I think it's probably a little bit too big so I'm just going to reduce the size of it um, and all we're really doing is going to try and find somewhere that this works on the image. I'm going to place it in where I think I can and where I think it'll work. Okay so I've gone ahead and I've just quickly adjusted it. I've put in two of the uh, different bokehs from my original image. Um, you can see here they have got the bottom left corner and we've got the bottom right and the top right corner. Um, if I turn those layers off, you can see the difference that it's made. It's just made it a little bit more interesting. Now, one thing we can do is just group those layers into one folder, and then we can add a color balance adjustment layer, and we're going to just literally mess around with the colors of these. Now, this is a very quick tutorial, so if you don't quite know uh, and you're not quite following, um, that's fine. There will be other videos on the channel that you can watch to try and get a better idea of how to use these different tools. Um, but the idea is we're just going to drag these sliders until we get colors that we think are quite nice. Um, I'm going for sort of cyan blues um, here, so I'm really just going to pull the blue sliders up and the cyan slider down until I get a color I like. Because one thing I've done is I've gone onto the hue saturation slider and I've adjusted the color to this color here. Now on its own, I think that looks wrong, um, but if I come onto the brush tool, I can then paint and get rid of some of the color from some of the other areas. So if I just paint to remove it here using the black brush tool as our foreground color, um, what we're doing is we're just sort of mixing together the two different blues and it does add a nice sort of feel. We've got sort of blues, purples and really vivid teals going on now in this image. Okay, so if I turn off that group now, you can see the difference it's made to the overall image. Um, it just adds some more interest. So that's probably the image done now. I wouldn't do any more with it. I don't want to overdo it. Um, but that's how you can kind of make a nice macro colorful photo using nothing but a camera and a glass lens ball. Um, you also need Photoshop and Lightroom, obviously, to color grade it. But that is the sort of look we've made. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, it's kind of in the Brandon Woeful style. Usually his images are a lot bluer. We could have done a lot more with this if we had used a bluer light. Um, unfortunately, this is the image we're going to kind of have to keep with at the moment. I hope you guys like this video. If you want to see any more like this, don't forget to leave a comment of any other videos you want to see. Don't forget to go follow us on Instagram. You will see our links down below in the description. Um, and I will have this video posted. And by the time I have this video posted, this photo will be up. So you can go and check that out and like it on there. Uh, we will see you in the next one. Don't forget to check out our presets on our site. There is a sale on for five days currently going on the Brandon Worth our presets. Use the discount code down below and you can get your presets with a discount. Uh, we will see you in the next one. Live long and prosper.